hello, besties. What's up? I hope you're having a okay day, you know? We can't all have great days every single day of the week. Uh, so I hope you're having an all right day today. If you're having a great day, I'm, I'm so proud of you. I'm so happy for you. I'm not. Welcome everyone. Today is Friday, baby. Fuck. It's Friday, baby. Fuck. Yeah, it's the weekend, baby. Fuck. Yeah, Friday, baby. Fuck. Fuck. The weekend, baby. Fuck. It's Friday, baby. Fuck. And you know what that means? It means another video from yours truly, me. Caitlin, my name is Caitlin. Like I previously just said about two seconds ago, my name is Caitlin, welcome to my channel. If you like this video, give give it a like. Um, maybe click subscribe, subscribe to the channel. If not, unlike the video, unsubscribe, and then leave a hate comment down below. I, I'm not sure about what. My mind feels like a pile of mush today. So I, I don't even have the capabilities to, to give you some parameters, um, but just leave one. Creative. All right, that's the only request I have. So today's video, I am going to go over 10 audiobooks slash series that are narrated by the same person that I think are phenomenal and that I think you should read if you have not listened to an audiobook already. As you may or may not know, I am a very, 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 I am a very big advocate for audiobooks. I love listening to audiobooks as I'm driving, as I'm reading my book, um, doing quite anything, I'll listen to an audiobook. And I really think that is what helped me, you know, stay on track with my reading this year is being able to listen to an audiobook. So without further ado, let us dive right in to my top 10 audiobooks. I did see Katie, uh, Katie Colson, I believe her last name is, do this video recently. Shout out, Katie. Hello, how are you? How are you doing? Hope you're having a wonderful day. All right, let's get into it. So first off, I just want to get it out of the way because, you know, I mention it in every single video. So you could probably guess what's coming, right? And that's the Cosmere, the Cosmere novels by Brandon Sanderson. I love the Cosmere audiobooks. I think they're fun and they're pretty traditional classic audiobooks. So Michael Kramer and Kate Ritt Reading, Redding, uh, both read them, and I believe that they are pro audiobook narrators. So they're both seasoned narrators, so they're giving you a diverse range of voice, which is great when you have a long cast list of characters inside the books. And if you have read physically a Cosmere novel, you know that there is quite a large set of, of cast members. So I love that we get diverse voices from both Michael and Kate while reading all of the Cosmere books. Also, they are gods at pacing. So in my opinion, the Cosmere novels can be sped up quite a bit um, because sometimes when you speed up a book, you kind of see really, really hear the, the pacing issues that the narrator may or may not have. I don't find to have those issues with Michael and Kate. I feel like you could speed it up to uh, your comfortability, to your liking and get through the book that much faster. So yeah, I really recommend if you haven't listened to any of the Cosmere books, you go ahead, give it a listen. If you are still needing to read, you know, a book in the Stormlight or a book in Mistborn Era 1 or 2, go ahead, pick up that audiobook, try listening and reading along, and I guarantee you, you'll have a blast. Next, we have the Brown Sisters Trilogy by Talia Hibbert. So this is actually narrated by Ione Butler, and she is a very talented audiobook narrator. So I think maybe it's the British accent for me, but the, the Ion Butler really brings the Brown Sisters trilogy to life for me. So I read Chloe without an audiobook, and I actually really didn't love Chloe. Um, I didn't love the first book that much. I, it was really lackluster for me. Um, but I decided to move on because I did see a lot of potential in Hibbert's writing. So I moved on, and I read and listened to the audiobook at the same time for Danny Brown. And boy, did that make all the world's difference for me. It really brought the story to life, brought the characters to life. Uh, Butler is so vibrant 
whenever she's narrating the Brown Sisters. And I absolutely love it. She brings wit. She brings whimsy. She brings th those punchlines. She, she really delivers them. There's one line, I believe it's in Danny Brown, about the great British baking show in Paul Hollywood. And I remember driving over a bridge last summer and hysterical laughing to that exact uh, moment in the audiobook. And I thought, wow, this is one great audiobook and I'm really enjoying this. Like I said, The Brown Sisters Trilogy by Talia Hibbert. If you have not listened to those audiobooks or given the trilogy a listen in general, I really highly recommend you pick them up and you do just that because coming from someone who doesn't love romance, I love the Brown Sisters. I love the Brown Sisters trilogy. So pick it up. Go ahead and just pick it up. Next, I have talked about this audiobook as well, but I really feel like I need to just hit home again because I don't see many people reading it, and the people that do read it, I see just read it physically and they don't end up loving the book. And that's because the book is meant to be listened to. The production on this audiobook blows you away when you listen to it and read along. It's really phenomenal. And that is The City We Became by N.K. Jemisin. The production on this audiobook is absolutely draw dropping. So beyond the use of narration, I love how The City We Became brings an ambient sound to really set the tone and the mood of the book when you're listening. It makes the world of a difference. It makes you feel like you're listening to, you know, a podcast that's telling a story or a TV show, a movie. It, it really brings that extra vibrance and life into the story. And if you're a New York City native, someone who's visited New York City, someone who lives near New York City in New York, if you're familiar with New York City, I really recommend you read this because, or read and listen to it, obviously because it's just such a, a magical story when you're listening to that audiobook. So go ahead and give The City We Became by N.K. Jemisin a listen. Next, I actually have the Carl's duology by Hank Green. Um, specifically book two is when we get that full cast of narrators in, in the, this duology. And I really enjoy when an audiobook- That's disturbing. I hope my camera picked that up. <laughs> okay, anyways, like I said, I love when we have a whole cast of narrators to narrate a book because it really makes you feel like you're listening to each character on their own. Kate and Michael, uh, Kate and Michael Redding. <laughs> Michael Kramer and Kate Redding that I've talked about before do a really good job with their vo vocal ranges, but I love it even more when we have different voice actors for all of the different characters. And that is what the Carl's duology really um, hits home. Like I said, especially that second book for me. Also, Hank Green is involved in the narration. He is the author of the duology. I personally really enjoy when an author is involved with the narration of his book or their book, her book. I think that it is extremely important and you can really hear kind of the way the author wants the story to be told when they're the ones narrating it. So I really appreciate how Hank went out of his way and did narrate some of his duology. So yes, if you haven't listened to the Carl's duology, science fiction, you know, it's lots of fun. I highly suggest that you do. Moving on. We have a book that I don't love the content of so much. It's not my favorite book, but the audiobook for it was superb because this was a book that was meant to be listened to. And that is Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid. So if you've ever read this book, you would know that the way that this novel is set up, it's almost in interview style going back and forth. So it's really, really meant to be listened to as an audiobook. And when you listen to it as an audiobook, you really are grapped, <laughs> grapped, gripped in that story of Daisy Jones and, you know, the rest of her bandmates. And like I said, it's not my favorite book out there. I'm not a huge contemporary person, you know, not my favorite of Taylor Jenkins Reid's books even, but I really enjoyed the way the storytelling and it transferred to audio beautifully. And it will transfer because it transfers to audio beautifully it's going to transfer to the screen beautifully too. And we do know that this is going to be a TV show. So if you haven't read it already, give it a listen. If you have read it only physically, I really suggest you give it a listen before the TV show comes out. Next, we're bringing in Dune by Frank Herber and another book that I don't love the contents of, you know, it was written in the 60s. It's a first of its time. But to me, since I've read it after a lot of other science fiction you know, novels and even movies, it seems 
done before, which I know you're going to say, Caitlin, he's the first to do it. And I, I realize that I recognize that doesn't mean I necessarily love the first rendition of, you know, the first to do it. So yes, but this audiobook again, um, utilizes some methods and, um, tips and tricks that the city we became did in utilizing sound, ambient sound in their narration to really build tension in the in the novel and in the story to build a mystery and myster mysterious mood in the story that you otherwise I don't think would truly get reading off the page. That is why I love audiobooks so much. When they're done well, they really set the tone and the mood for your experience reading the book and it could really make or break it. And for Dune, honestly, I don't if it if it didn't have a good audiobook, I don't know if I would have gotten through it. Dune's audiobook to me was a really really good audiobook, well done good use of ambient sound to build tension and tone and great narrators and I, I just really enjoyed it. So yeah, Dune by Frank Herbert, not the best story, but a really great audiobook. Next I have Piranesi by Susanna Clarke. This is a book I read at the beginning of the year. I actually really enjoy this book and the narration just makes it so whimsical. Our narrator dives deep into our main character psyche and really captures the mystery, the whimsy of being inside wherever Piranesi is. And I don't want to spoil it if you haven't read or listened to this book already, but it is an extremely magical story about uh, a person who is living in this giant mansion that that floods with tides every day filled with marble and marble statues and he can't get out he doesn't know how to get out but he doesn't necessarily want to and i just i i really love the novel i know that some people think it might be too like a bit too cerebral predictable you know this that and the other thing I loved it. Again, maybe that's because I listened to the audiobook. I really think an audiobook can make a break uh, a subpar story if they have that that right narration style for uh, said novel. And I think um, the audiobook narrator of Piranesi really did a wonderful job of capturing the the whimsy that I believe Susanna Clark was trying to get across in this story. So. Yeah, I really loved the audiobook for Piranesi by Susanna Clark. Next, we have a bit of a different type of book for me. I've never talked about it and I, I don't even think I included it. Uh, well, I did read it in 2020, so I wouldn't have included it in my 2021 books, but I, I may have listened on a drive with my boyfriend to the audiobook for Capital Gains by Chip Gaines. And you're thinking this is very different for you, an autobiography by Chip Gaines. Yeah. I know, but it was a lot of fun. My boyfriend and I enjoy Fixer Upper sometimes, so we decided to give his autobiography a listen, especially because you guessed it, Chip Gaines narrates his autobiography. And if you have seen Fixer Upper, you know Chip has a, a bit of a sense of humor and he did a great job narrating this audiobook. He did a great job telling his own stories and really uh, capturing that humor and that kind of goofiness that you see on the TV show, but still flipping it back to show the serious side of his life that isn't broadcast on television. So yeah, I really enjoyed Capital Gains by Chip Gaines. If you are looking for an autobiography about uh, uh, the people on Fixer Upper, I highly recommend it. Uh, light anecdotes about life, nothing that you really learn that you haven't learned before but fun, you know, fun and full of that Chip Gaines humor, if that's what you enjoy. So I really enjoyed that audiobook. I love when authors narrate their own audiobooks because like I said, you can really tell the intention of which they had when they wrote it and it comes through when they read it. And I, I really adore that. I adore it so much. Nine, we have The First Sister by uh, the trilogy, the whole trilogy by Lyndon A. Lewis. So I've talked about this trilogy here, there, and everywhere because I truly believe none of people have read or listened to this trilogy. Two books are out right now by Lyndon A. Lewis, but the audiobooks, especially, I think The Second Rebel is the only one with a full cast of characters. I may be wrong. Actually, I think I am wrong, but the second book has a whole cast of characters and I always talk about how this is the book for LGBTQIA plus rep in space. 
a LGBTQIA plus Star Wars. Well, we have that coming through in the narrators as well. Neo Sichi is actually a non-binary voice actor. And I love that for them. And I love that they actually narrated Hero's voice inside the First Sister trilogy. I love Hiro so much. One of my favorite fucking badass characters. And just the fact that it's also narrated by a non-binary person warms my heart because Hiro themselves is also non-binary and you really see that that plot line and that struggle for them throughout um the first two books and you see them kind of come more to terms with them themselves as a non-binary being in person in that second book and I just really love when I was doing the research for this video I saw that Neo was a non-binary voice actor and I love that they casted a non-binary a non-binary voice actor to play a non-binary character and I fucking love it I adore it um please I I think Hiro is non-binary I believe Hiro is non-binary um I read them as non-binary and lastly I'm gonna talk about a book that I hate I I hate the book itself but I understand why it's talked about when it comes to the audiobook and that is Sadie by Courtney Summers if you haven't read this book and you get triggered by talks and especially inconsiderate and um illogical um uh you know cold conversations surrounding addiction and drug use um I don't suggest you read or listen to this book but if that's not something that bothers you to your core deeply this is a good audiobook to listen to again it's a book that is set up so it's almost like you're you're destined and made to listen to it it's like a podcast style but quite honestly the conversations surrounding addiction seem fucking wood-brained to me personally and I hated it absolutely despised it so I don't recommend it but I do understand why people are constantly talking about this audiobook because objectively the audiobook itself makes sense but I still don't I still don't like the book like I said if that type of conversation doesn't bother you give it a read but if it does skip over it and read any of the other nine options on this list so that's it folks that is my top 10 audiobooks that I've listened to in the past I would say two years is when I've really gotten into audiobooks if you liked this video give it a thumbs up subscribe to my channel down below comment down below what's your favorite audiobook did I mention it in this video if not tell me why it's your favorite audiobook tell me why it's your favorite audiobook anyway I would really love to know and engage with you guys in the comments if you didn't like this video unlike it you can dislike it but then you'll stop seeing my channel content I don't know if you want that if you do you can dislike it then unsubscribe to the channel and leave a hate comment like I said my brain is complete mush we all have those times in our life where we're just fucking mush and that is right now for me like i said leave a creative hate comment down below as my professors once said in the past all press is good press as long as you spell my name correctly and that is c-a-i-t-l-i-n i hope you're having a wonderful day if not i hope you're having a subpar day um peace and love peace and love goodbye everyone